Welcome everyone to this VLSI design lecture series. In today's lecture video, I'll be discussing about layout diagrams. So let us try to draw a layout diagram for a Boolean expression a dot b plus c dot d the whole bar. The circuit diagram is as follows. For dot operation, PMOS transistor should be counted in parallel. Whereas for plus operation, PMOS transistor should be counted in series. Hence, A dot B, PMOS P1 and P2 are counted in parallel. C dot D, because it is dot operation, PMOS transistors are counted in parallel. Whereas for PMOS implementation, if we have a plus operation, we have to connect PMOS transistors in series. Hence, A, B combination is counted in series with C, D. So this is with respect to pull-up network, which consists of PMOS transistors. Pull-down network consists of NMOS transistors. For NMOS transistors, for dot operation, NMOS transistors are counted in series. Hence, A dot B, which is the dot operation, NMOS transistors are counted in series. C dot D, which is a dot operation, NMOS transistors are counted in series. Whereas between these two combinations, A dot P, C dot D, we have a plus operation. For plus operation, NMOS transistors are counted in parallel. Hence, the series combination of AB is counted in parallel with the series combination of CD. So this is how we draw the circuit diagram for any given Boolean expression. The point to remember is for dot operation, PMOS transistors are always counted in parallel and NMOS transistors are always counted in series. For plus operation, PMOS transistors are always counted in series, whereas NMOS transistors are always counted in parallel. So now what we have done is we have just named terminals and we have named the transistors. PMOS transistors and NMOS transistors. We have four PMOS transistors and four NMOS transistors, which is counted as shown in the figure. For this particular combination, for this particular circuit, let us try to implement layout diagram. The first thing which we do when we are representing layout diagram is, we draw VDD rail as well as ground rail. VDD rail as well as ground rail is drawn with leaving a sufficient space between VDD rail as well as ground rail so that we can implement PMOS transistor as well as NMOS transistor. To implement PMOS transistor, we need PTAP diffusion. To implement NMOS transistor, we need NTAP diffusion. Only when diffusion crosses polysilicon, we form transistor. That is, when PTAP diffusion is crossed by polysilicon, we get PMOS transistor. When N-type diffusion is crossed by polysilicon, we get NMOS transistor. So we just cross the transistors, uh, the diffusions with polysilicon to form transistors. If you observe the combination of polysilicon, which we have used here is D, B, A, C. The inputs are D, B, A, C. We have not named it as A, B, C, D. There is, there is a reason why we have represented like this. If we observe this combination D, B, A, C, D, B, A, C, it forms a closed path. It forms a complete path with respect to pull-up network. Similarly, if we observe at the bottom pull-down network, D, B, A, C, it forms a complete path. So because it forms a continuous complete path for both pull-up network and pull-down network, we have chosen that combination D, B, A, C. It will become easier for us to give the connections when we use continuous paths. Whereas, for example, if we go for A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, it doesn't form a closed path. A, B, C, D, it doesn't form a closed, a complete path. A, B, C, D, though it forms a closed, complete path for the pull-up network A, B, C, D, whereas it doesn't form for pull-down network A, B, next comes D. So it doesn't form a closed or complete path. 
for full learning curve. Hence, that particular combination is not chosen. Similarly, you can choose one more combination: B A C D. B A C D. You can write here as B A C D. It's left to you. We have chosen this particular combination for explanation: D B A C. Selecting a continuous, complete path for both pull-up network and pull-down network is called as Euler's path. Now let us see how the connections can be given. So I've just named the transistors which are formed: the top transistors P1, P2, P3, P4; bottom ones N1, N2, N3, and N4. With respect to the circuit, let us try to connect the layout diagram. Let us consider pull-up network first. And for pull-up network P4, let us consider this particular terminal as source terminal. So this is source terminal. Definitely, the adjacent terminal to that should be drain terminal. The source terminal of P4 is connected to drain terminal of P2. So this is the source terminal of P4. It should be connected to drain terminal of P2. So this terminal of P2 transistor should definitely be drain. If this is drain of P2, adjacent to that of P2, they should definitely be source. Next, source of P2 is connected to source of P1 with respect to the circuit diagram. So this is source of P2 connecting to that. This particular terminal we have to connect source of P1. So this will definitely be source of P1. If this is source of P1. Adjacent to that, this should definitely be drain of P1. Source of P1 is connected to source of P2, which in turn is connected to VDD. Source of P1, which is connected to source of P2, which in turn is connected to VDD. That same thing we have represented here. If this is a source terminal of P1, adjacent to that, this should definitely be drain. So that will be drain of P1. Drain of P MOS transistor P1 should be connected to source of P3. So this is drain of P1. This should definitely be source of P3. So if this is source of P3. Adjacent to that, this should be drain of P3. Simple. Drain of P3 is connected to drain of P4. So this is drain of P3. This is drain of P4. It should be connected. And we have used metal layer for connecting purpose. Similarly, drain of P2 should be connected to drain of P1. This is drain of P2. Should be connected to drain of P1. So we have given connections. So this forms the connections for pull-up network, which consists of PMOS transistors. Next, let us connect the same way for our pull-down network by making use of this circuit diagram. Let us start from N4 transistor first, and let us consider this particular terminal of N4 as source terminal. Source terminal. So, if this is a source terminal, adjacent to that, this should definitely be the drain terminal. The source terminal of N4 transistor is connected to source terminal of N2 transistor with respect to the circuit diagram. So, this is source terminal of N4 transistor. This is N2. So, this should definitely be source of N2 because those two are connected as per the circuit. Next, source terminal of N4, N2 as well as N4 is connected to ground. So we have connected source and source of N2 and, and as well as N4 to ground. Next, if this is a source terminal of N2 transistor, adjacent to that, this terminal should definitely be drain terminal. Drain terminal of N2, N2 transistor is connected to source of N1. This is drain of N2, so this should definitely be source of N1. Next, source of N1. If this is source of N1. This should definitely be drain of N1. Drain of N1 is connected to drain of N3. This is N3 transistor. So drain should be connected to drain of N3. So this particular terminal should definitely be drain of N3 as per our circuit. If this is drain of N3 transistor, then adjacent to that, this particular terminal of N3 should definitely be source. Next, source terminal of N3 is connected to Drain terminal of N4. Source terminal of N3 is connected to drain terminal of N4, which is connected. Next, drain terminal of N1 and N3 
is connected to output. So this is output. Drain terminal of N1 is connected to drain terminal of N3, which is already done, which in turn is connected to drain terminal of P3 as well as drain terminal of P4. Drain terminal of P3 and this is drain terminal of P4. So we have to establish a connection over here and this connection should be given as output. The same thing is done. Drain and drain of N1 and N3, drain and drain of P3 and P4 is shorted that is given as output. After this, we have to establish contacts. That is very important. Whenever there are two different layers meeting at a point, and we have to establish an electrical connection between those two layers, we should definitely use contacts. So we have just used different contacts. So this is how we represent a layout diagram, or we draw the layout diagram for the given Boolean expression. I hope that you have understood how to represent layout diagram for a given Boolean expression. Thank you.